right now there is an urgency of the rise of the messianic generation the messianic generation is the revealing of a new set of messiah these words have been prophesied by the prophet spoken by the wise man about the coming of a generation that will bear the emblem of the lord a generation that will take a matching order to represent the lord in their day and time in dying they will die in martyrdom they will be killed these are going to be men and women upon whom their blood will be the seed for the gospel. These are going to be men and women that they will never shut their mouth because of what they will gain. These are men and women that will never compromise. There is a rise of the Messianic generation. These are men and women that are built in caves. They are built in the desert. They are built in the backside of the mountain. Many of them, you may know nothing about them. But when they begin to speak about their encounters and their visitation, you will understand. These are men and women that God is about to reveal in this time. These ones, they may not be found in your churches. They may not be found in your contemporary locations, but they belong to the secret place. They are going to be like the mighty men of David that God is going to be revealing. Many of you will not even understand them, but you will only be able to comprehend the impartation when they speak. These ones, they are going to be men that their stories are yet to be untold. Many of them, their stories are not yet told because no one knows them. There are faceless men that are about to be revealed in this time. It's a messianic generation of men and women that have given up all for the Lord. These are men that like Elijah of Tishbite, they will be revealed upon the scene at the last time. God has hired a lot of his army, but he's yet again about to reveal them. There is a rise of a messianic generation Men and women that will become saviors in our time. These men, Ananias may not approve of them because they didn't go to the school of ministry. Many of them may not be shepherded by many. I assure you, their shepherd was just the Lord. It will amaze you. It will amaze you. They will be like the egg that is hatched in the hatchery that may not have actually a mother, but somehow they have the same kind of temperature, the same kind of energy for them to be hatched. These are men and women that will be like David. They went through all kinds of things. The things they went through make them destitute, deserted. And their desertion and their death make them to return to the cave of Adullam. Upon the cave of Adullam, they are schooled by the immortals. These are men and women that could not find the definition of their calling in keeping to a, a book they read. These are men and women that could not understand their calling. They cannot define themselves in keeping to five-fold operation. They find themselves confused because in their confusion is the definition of who they are. These men were not public enough for their process to be known by men. No. These are new men and women that the Lord God is about to be revealing. I assure you, there is a rise of a voice that cannot be shut down. The Bible says, Savior shall rise from Mount Zion. These are a godly seed. These are a seed that was planted before time began. These were men and women that the calling of God was upon them, but the devil desired to shut them down a long time ago. These were men that were not spiritual before. They may be drunkard, they may be sex addict, they may be like a prostitute before, but the Lord God is calling them again because the covenant that the Lord had with their fathers and their forefathers, the Lord is beckoning upon. These were men and women that do not even understand why. And still in their darkness, they still return back to the Lord. They don't even know why, as carnal as they were. They were returning back to the Lord daily. These are men that may not be accepted within the church walls. Because one of the greatest enemies of the church in this time is not Muslims. It's not Boko Haram, but it's the disunity in the body of Christ itself. It's how the ministers in the body of Christ are not united as such. We are small in strength. These ones are going to come from the backside of the mountain. They are not built within the churches. So they don't even understand the politics that go on in the churches. These ones will be babes and sucklings. They will not understand anything apart from the kingdom of the Lord. This is a generation that nothing will give them pleasure except the advancement of the kingdom. If you read the book of Obadiah 1 from 1, so the vision of Obadiah, thus says the Lord God concerning Edom, we have had a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador is sent among the hidden. Arise here and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I made this small among the hidden. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thy heart had deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock, whose habitations is high, that said in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Thou that exalt thyself as the eagle, and thou that set thy nest among the stars, thine will I bring thee down, says the Lord. 
If you go to verse 17, he said, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and the eyes shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. 18 says, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for a stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken it, and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain the Philistine, and they shall possess the field of Ephraim, and the field of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead, and the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanite, even unto Zeraphite, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in this which is in Sepharad, and shall possess the city of the south, and saviors shall come out up at Mount Zion and to join the mouth of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord. What we saw here is how a people that decide to exalt themselves beyond the lifting of God, the Lord will bring them down. Any man that decides to put himself in a, in a place where God did not put him, the Lord will humble him down. Any man that God lift up, nobody can bring down. But any man that God bring down, no one can lift him up. You must understand that it is God is the one that make men strong. And he's the one that can make men weak. God can lift you and no one can bring you down. But if God decides to take you up, no man can bring you down. But if God decides to bring you down, no man can keep you up. If any man tries to keep you up, you together with the man that wants to keep you up will go down. That was the story of the house of Esau. God lifted them up. God brought them down. And when God began to bring them down, he decided that all of them go down. There are times when the Lord himself decides that a generation be wiped out. There are times when God himself exalts the house of Israel. But there are times when he himself brings them down. The captivity that before the house of Israel, most time it was God. If not because God gave them up, they would never have gone down. And that was why Jesus Christ appeared before the council and he let them understand that it is not you that brought me down because Pilate felt he was the one that brought him down. He said, no, it is the father himself that decided to bruise me. And him that bruised me, he will lift me up again. If Even if I want him to rescue me now, I will beckon upon legions of angels and they will break the protocol of heaven to ensure that I'm delivered. But he decided to keep it silent. I need you to understand that right now is a time when the Lord God is revealing men. These men not, might have been brought down by men, but God is lifting them. Because God has a recovery system. The recovery system of God is the rise of a messianic generation. An omega generation that will have in themselves the strength of the Lord for a generation. At every season in your life, God will take you through a process to confirm certain level of authority and realms in Him, in you. And many more times, this processes that he take you through may not be convenient as we saw in that scripture he took the Israelites through a process of captivity after war he began to deliver them by the rise of a generation that sometimes god will bring you to captivity and yet again deliver you out of captivity it is his strength at working to bring you out of captivity he says save your shall rise out of zion somehow from inside of zion he will bring out men but mind you, all of Zion can be in captivity and God can appoint a prophet. Like Ezekiel. Ezekiel was among the captivity by the river Kabbas. So the Lord came upon him and suddenly he was a prophet in captivity. But he gave them an understanding of how much more the timeline of their habitation will be there. You must understand that there is a rise of a new breed of believers that God is revealing. This one, God can trust them. This one, God, God needs them that he can be able to advance. We are in a season where God requires men that he can trust. Many of the men that God has trusted have betrayed him. Many of them have taken upon themselves diverse kinds of ambition. So God is looking for men and women that he can trust. As such, he wants to reveal a men and women that have been locked up for a very long time. This one, their sacrifices and their obedience have arisen unto God as a memorial. They are like Cornelius. They are not qualified, but their arm giving and their prayer as ascend as a memorial. And now angels begin to traffic through their region. And God is sending gate men to their region so that they can unlock the heavens over them. And so that they can establish foundation upon them that the spirit of God can find footing so that there can be liberty of the spirit among their midst. Cornelius may not be qualified, but because the book of the membranes was open, he was remembered among many people that were even Jews. Why 
while he was still a Gentile. I need you to understand that there are many people right now that may not be known, but the Lord God has opened the book of remembrance. And now they are being remembered. An angelic being will begin to traffic through the region. And God will supply his strength upon them that they may be able to thrive. Because now he has trust them. Until God trusts a man, he can never send him. I told you that no matter how desperate God is, he can never really use a wrong man. No matter how desperate God is, he will have to walk upon a man before he will send him out. It is God that accredits of men. And after God encounters Saul, he was referred to Ananias if you realize. Although Ananias himself did not want to approve of Saul. Because Ananias, he didn't want God to approve of him. So he began to speak a lot about Saul, of how much more Saul persecuted the Christian. And God rebuked him. Jesus Christ had to rebuke him. And try to let him understand that this guy might not have been in your school of ministry. But I have approved of this guy. And this guy is a resultant effect of your prayer. It's a resultant effect of the intercession of the body of Christ. As such, he may not be qualified, but I have decided to qualify him. In keeping to die, let him be. Well, if you realize that although God referred him to him, it didn't take long. He went to the wilderness of Arabia. For what? For the accreditation of God. God approved of him. Ananias approved of him. He returned back to the wilderness of Arabia to be accredited. Before he went and see Peter. Many people did not know that when you send the calling of God upon your life, the first thing to do after you align to a mentor, return back to the secret place. Go to the wilderness of Arabia. Let nobody know you. Don't try to start having viewers all over the world. You have zero viewers. At that point, the Lord will take you deeper. The root of the Lord will take you deeper. Then he will make you a Messiah. Then men can begin to align with you. At that time, after three years, you can return back to Peter and tell him that, yes, the Lord has approved of you. He may deny you, but you can never deny the wisdom of God upon your life. You must understand that left to men, you can't do it. Or you are not qualified it does not matter how much the kingdom of god beckon upon you left to men you are not qualified left to men you cannot do it why it's not men that qualify men it will require men that god have engineered to represent god you must understand that this new messianic generation that is rising may never be accepted by others they will be highly persecuted by people but jesus christ was speaking and he let us understand that it's a persecution a portion for every believer that truly want to represent him why because himself was not accepted jesus christ was the one that let us understand that in this earth we are going to receive persecution jesus was not even accepted in the society even the church elders did not accept him because they refused him although he was the messiah he must have to be able to understand that there are men and women today that you may never see them in your churches or any ministry but they are in the cave and the secret place for many years these are men that god is going to be revealing they are in the backside of the desert and the mountains these men nobody know their story there are men whom their stories are yet to be told these ones you celebrate today, their stories are told. You know about the encounters of Philip Cephas. You know about the 18 hours visions of, Paul, uh, of David to Oedipo. You know about the encounters that these men have. You know about the encounters and their visitations. You are listening to their sermons and their message. But there is a generation coming, you know nothing about them. You will only know them when they introduce themselves from the cave. Their voice can never be resisted because the utterances that will come from their lips will make your heart burn. He said, I cannot deny that these ones have been with Jesus. There is a there is a level of efficacy that a man reveals if he has dwelt with the Lord. And what the Lord is doing right now, there are men that he has tremendously dealt with that is bringing them to the scene. Is what I call the Messianic generation. They will rise as saviors in diverse spheres of operation. These are men that have been having tremendous encounters and visitations and they are hidden by the Lord. Now they are about to be revealed. You are going to begin to see many of such men in this time. Don't speak against them. Never speak against them. Never speak against them because you may not even know nothing about them. You may know nothing about their sacrifice. You may know nothing about their encounters. The best you can do is to either align with them or to honor them. Paul, after his conversion, 
I told you he was taken to the wilderness of Arabia for three and a half years. This was what made him. It was not because Ananias lay hands on him. It was not because he went to a school of ministry. It was not because of what Gamaliel did. No. The same thing with Elijah. Elijah was a teach by. We never heard about how, where, how he was built, but we know that he was a man that remained with the Lord. Just like an egg that was hatched in the hatchery. Alone, you may never even know that this egg was in the hatchery. In fact, because there was no hen that would truly have actually been able to cover the egg, but there was a condition that that egg was subjected to, that that condition looked like a womb. It was the womb of the spirit that incubated that egg and allowed the egg to hatch a chick. The same thing that are men and women today that look like outcast. Many of them, their parents call them failures. Their parents cast them away. Their father say you are mad. Their father say they are failures. Their mother say they are failures. They may look like vagabonds, but these are men and women that the Lord God is incubating the womb of the spirit. They don't even know why their life right now is in confusion, but the Lord God is defining again their, his operation upon them so that he can give them a voice of, among the body of Christ. These men are men that went back to the Lord when everything failed them. Like David, they are school in the cave. David was the last born in his family. But do you truly tell a last born to go and take care of cattle and sheep in the wilderness? David was a last born, but he was not loved even among his, his, his own peers. His own parents rejected him. And that's why he said, when my father and my mother rejected me, the Lord was my Lord. The Lord was my God. The Lord was my father and my mother. How can you send a last born to go and take care of sheep? Every last born is giving coat of many colors, but this one was sent to take care of sheep, was sent to endanger certain kinds of things in the wilderness. It was there that he was schooled by the Lord. It was That was his own school of ministry. That was where he killed the bear. That was where he killed the, 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 the lion. And when he met Goliath, it was easy because the Lord God of covenant is the same yesterday and today and forever. These men will not be public. You may never know about their strength, but you can never deny their encounters in the Lord. Yes, they will come to learn light by the alignment to the fathers because they will soon be given the right hand of fellowship because these men are encountered in the spirit by men there are many men you have been encountering the spirit many of you are having encounters you can't even understand you are seeing men and women in your dreams you can't even know it's later on you now see them in life and you're ah i have seen this person before yes the person has been in the spirit he has been in the wilderness but the lord is beckoning upon you that this one has a dimension you need to actually encounter I told you men are gate. Certain level of operations in God, men are custodians of it. And until you encounter them, you may never be able to know it. These men will become what they will be by the grace of God. By that grace of God, it will grant them the privilege to labor. They may not be present in your church. They may not attend your Bible school, but the strength of God is in their life. There are times when men become inconsequential in the building of men. That is when God wants to raise a prototype. There are times when God wants to raise a prototype. It was like the time when God was at work in the act of the apostle. God killed anyone that is not aligned. So Ananias and Sapphira became a victim of the judgment of the Lord because a prototype was about to be raised. There are times when God judged speedily because at that time he does not want a generation to look at you as an example. There are times when God built men that he doesn't involve men. Why? Because men cannot call men to do the work of God. It will require God to call men to do his own work. And men cannot build men. It's God that built men. Men can never ordain men to do the work of God. No, there is the ordination of men but there's the ordination of God. This Messianic generation may not be ordained by men, but they are going to be ordained by God. Before men ordain you, ensure that God ordain you. If you want to be part of this generation that we have the new move of God, seek for the ordination of God first before the ordination of men. If men ordain you, God can reject you. But if God ordain you, men can never reject you. These are men that the ordination of God is steadfast. Who ordain apostles? Who ordain prophets? In scriptures, men cannot ordain this. This are graces. These are graces supplied by the Lord. Men ordain bishops. Men ordain dickies. Men ordain reverends. But the true grace of the Lord upon a man is defined according to the area of his calling and according to his build up in schooling of the spirit. You must understand that a prototype is being raised now of a Messianic generation. These are men that will become solution providers. They will shock many. They will amaze many. They will, be, they will become like the Samuel, the younger generation. The fathers must have to align to them because God 
just want to work with them in this generation somehow god has interest in the younger generation there has never been a time in history where god worked with the younger generation like in this time where young men and women are affairing are heralding the affairs of the kingdom like never before yes these men will not be immune of mistakes these children will not be immune of mistakes but you cannot deny the strength of the lord upon their life yes they will have make many mistakes but the lord god is going to equip them the lord god is going to be making them a voice to a generation now these men are going to be accredited by the immortals in the spirit their accredit their accreditation is as a result of their encounters their visitations and the school in the spirit where will they belong the same lord the same spirit but diverse areas of pathways of accreditation you must understand that in the realm of the spirit the way god equip men is strange somebody can be in china seeking the lord and jesus will appear to him there somebody can be in u.s seeking the lord and jesus will appear to him there somebody can be in lagos seeking the lord and jesus can appear to him there somebody can be in lafia seeking the lord and jesus can appear to him there somebody can be in zaria seeking the lord and god can appear to him there god does not need to consult any man before he appears to you god does not need to consult any man before he come to encounter you you may have gone to the university of new york you must have gone to new york state university you must have gone to california Uni state university you must have gone to abu amodi Bello university zania you must have gone to university of ibadan you must have gone to unn you must have gone to a university in new york you must have gone to a university in, uh, in london you must have gone to a university in china but at the tail end you may be given a certification as an engineer as a mechanical engineer as a as uh, as an electrical engineer as a civil engineer or you may be certified as a law student as a barrister as a lawyer as a legal practitioner you might have been certified as a medical practitioner as a doctor you might be certified as a pharmacy but you went to diverse of this school the same accreditation but diverse institution so somebody may go to us and be certified as a pharmacist i know that we go to china and be certified as a pharmacist i know that we go to india and be certified as a pharmacist all of them are pharmacists with the one that is certified in nigeria as a pharmacist why is diverse institution of accreditation but the same certification you must understand that in the realm of the spirit the how god equipped men is diverse the caves are not limited the secret place are not limited the Otaru is not limited to a region. You must understand that like the woman of Samaria, Jesus Christ let her know that a time is going to come and now is the time when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You may get a degree for, in biology from different school, but you have the same kind of knowledge because that is what I accredited you. So many women, many men in this time, they may never attend your church they may never even attend your ministry they may never even know your father in the lord but i assure you they are accredited and approved by the lord it will amaze you how many genuine voices you never know about them that are touching lives in millions in diverse countries some of them are not even speaking your language some of them are even speaking another language entirely but they are effective you may not have to understand how god encountered them how God viewed them is none of your business. You must understand that God is raising a Messianic generation. Don't be limiting God and putting God in a stereotype. God can never stay in your pocket. God cannot only remain in your room. God will leave your room to encounter men and women. Men are like those diverse faculties in the spirit and institution. Spirit are also like those diverse faculties and institution. Because spirit are too many. Many of them encounter men on a daily basis. The spirit that works with me will be different from the spirit that works with you. The spirit that encounters me to ensure I become who I am may be different from the one that encounters you. That I am not familiar with them does not mean that something is wrong with you. And that is why Peter looked at Paul. He said, Carl, the thing that Paul is saying may be hard for me to understand. But I cannot deny that Peter, that Paul has been with Jesus. You may not understand the encounters that define him, but he has been with Jesus. No matter how you do, the grace of God at working in Peter to make him an apostle to the Jew is the same grace of God at working in Paul to make him an apostle to the Gentile. Peter could have never preached to a Gentile. For while he went to the house of Cornelius, God had to override him. When he returned back to the courtroom of the Jewish apostles, they fought him. 
Why did they fight him? Because their white skin could not contain the Gentile. There are men and women that their white skin could not contain a denomination. As such, God will leave them the way they are. So God must have to raise new apostolic and prophetic generation. A Messianic generation do not belong to a tribe. They don't belong to a church. They don't belong to a denomination. So they cannot be limited because they can go anywhere. To the, they can go to anywhere the Lord send them. Because these ones, their advantage is in how much more they align to the Lord. You must understand that in this season and this time, it does not matter if men do not approve of you. If the Lord approve of you, you can be effective in your campus building men. You can be effective in your area building men. You can be effective in your city equipping men. You can be effective in that your locality, that your community building men. Nobody may know, but you will be raising thousands of men there. They may never know you, but you are effective. Nobody will be celebrated, but you are effective. How many men of God you don't know? You come across them one day and discover they have taught millions of lives. The same way, there are many of you that might never have known, if not because of today. You must understand that there are diverse men, as popular as some, some of us can be. I have been to a region that they don't know as most popular certain men of God. Why? This world is too big. Check through your region. An average church has maybe one million people. An average city has about five, six million people. And an average church gather only but a million. We may have 100,000 of people gather in one place. If you command 100,000 followers, it looks like a good thing. But it's still a failure compared to that which is still available. You must understand that we still need men and women in your campus. Men and women in your community. Because no matter how anointed I am, they may never believe me. They may believe you. So you must understand that God is raising again a messianic generation. This one don't have to align to a branch of a church. They may not do a branch of a church. They may not do a branch of a ministry, but they will be effective because that is what the Lord want them to be. Formless and nameless. They may not even have a name. They may just have the burden of the Lord upon them.